This build is taking a turn. Time to install the steering column. Oh god, that's a terrible joke. In this video we're going to install the steering column as shown on page 8 of the build manual. You'll only need your spanners for this build today. The steering column connects the steering wheels to the front wheels allowing you to steer the car. Very important when trying to tackle a tricky slalom course. Now to show you how to install it, over to Steve. One little bit that is uh, on here which isn't actually steering related but we are going to fit at this point is a little switch just here. Um, this is a little rocker switch it has a, a red led in one end which will show when it's actually powered up um, also has a nut a finger to open nut doesn't need any tools this one on the bottom which is going to take off but this it goes down through this little hole here and just place it down there and we're going to place it with the led away from the driver to the front of the car and that's because if the driver reaches for it in a hurry quickest movement they will do is that which will switch it off and for the time being I'm just going to put that nut back on the thread at the bottom just loosely and we'll come back to wiring that in a later video. Our next step is actually to fit the steering column. Part of that actually pokes down through a hole in the bottom of the chassis so this is the point where we are in need of actually having the chassis off the ground um, to give us some working space. We've actually got it on a couple of fold out trestles and it's cable tied to those trestles for safety so it, it can't actually fall off at all. What we're going to show you now is at least one way of um, alternative way of supporting the car. So we've got a couple of plastic crates, uh, one at each end, which gives a complete clearance all the way underneath the car um, bar the very extreme ends. However, being plastic, they're not as safe because it does slide around a bit. It's not got a long way to fall, but be careful to keep safety in mind at all times when you're building your car. What we're going to do is position the bolt that goes into the bottom of the steering column first. And just put the steering column to one side and I have the bolt here and we put a big wide washer on there that spreads the load on the bottom plate and we come up through this hole here. So coming from underneath the car, put the bolt through there. Another wide washer again to spread the load and then a plain nut and we wind that on most of the way but leaving it loose so that bolt can still be turned and moved around and then we sit another washer on top of there. One preparatory stage to do with our uh, steering column before we actually fit it to the car um, is to actually put this bolt through the bottom of the steering column. The reason we do that is because once the steering column is fitted to the car you haven't got space underneath the car to actually put that bolt through there. Just pop the washer and nut on the other end of that just to keep it in place. Then we take our two nylon steering blocks, one to go above the steering column and one to go below. Stated in reverse order, but there we go. Um, and line those up with the two holes in this tab on the uh, front chassis hoop. I've already put a washer onto my longer bolts here and um, given I'm working single-handed it's easier to do it that way in preparation. Two bolts down through there and then whilst holding that in place I can put a washer on the bottom of that bolt and then a nut just done finger tight and then the same for the other side. Our next step is actually to place the steering column against the bolt we've already put in and reach underneath and actually screw that into the bottom of the steering column and you'll see the steering column will go down towards where we've left that nut. And screw it most of the way down but not all the way. Having fitted our steering column loosely to the car we now need to tighten up the bolts at the uh, top end and I've got a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter ratchet spanner here and there we go. Now when tightening these it's important to tighten them evenly so tighten one side and then the other side a little bit so we're going to do that nice even tightening. Might go backwards and forwards between each side several times. 
and then when it starts to offer more resistance stop there we don't want to over tighten this because if we over tighten it we won't be able to turn our steering oh that'd be worrying so i'm going to hand over to gav now because he can explain a bit more about friction ah friction it could be a help and a hindrance friction is the force that stops objects from sliding past each other for example if i lift up this board you'll see that the block actually stays in place. This is because friction is acting against gravity, but if I continue to lift the board, eventually gravity will overcome friction and the block slides down. Now, if we think about your steering column, the white blocks clamp around the steering column and hold it in place. But if you do the white blocks up too tight, you'll no longer be able to turn the steering wheel because the friction force is too great. You can feel that for yourself. If you hold an object in your hand, the tighter you grasp it, the harder it will be to rotate the object. And I wonder if you can hold it so tight that you can no longer rotate it. I bet you can. Now friction is great for things like the brakes. We want there to be a lot of friction there because that will help us slow down as quick as possible. But there are scenarios where we need to overcome friction. If we go back to my spoon, the less I hold on to the spoon, the easier it is to rotate. Or in other words, the less pressure I hold the spoon with, which is the force over the surface area, the easier it is to rotate. And this is because the frictional force is a lot less. This is why Steve said not to do the bolts up too tight. Another way of overcoming friction is with lubrication. This is because friction is also dependent on how rough a surface is. When you walk on the path, there's a lot of grip. But when water freezes on the path during the winter, it becomes very slippery, and I've definitely slipped on an ice patch before. This is because ice is a lot smoother than tarmac. Lubricants act like the ice. They make surfaces smoother, and therefore reduce friction. So if we add some cling film and some soapy water to the board, we should start to see the block slide a lot earlier than before. And this is because the soapy water will act as a lubricant on the cling film. This means that the frictional force on the block will be less and gravity can overcome it sooner. Now if you do plan on using a lubricant, please don't use soap. It's not very good on the metal, but you don't need me to tell you that. Back to the build. So what we're going to do now is actually uh, adjust our bottom fixing for the steering column down here on the chassis level. Um, for that I'm going to need a 13mm spanner. Um, but you'll see here the locking nut, this small plane nut that we put on is quite a way distant from the chassis at the moment. First step we need to take is to actually wind that down and we can do it by hand so that it is touching that bottom washer and making sure that the bolt is pushed up from underneath. So it's like we're tightening the nut to the bolt but actually we still want to be able to turn the bolt. So that's now touching but actually not tight. I can still turn the bolt from underneath. That's our first step. The next step is to then wind the bolt into the bottom of the steering column. Again, as it's all loose and new, I can do that by hand from underneath at the moment. What you'll see is the gap between the bottom of the steering column and this other washer reducing as I tighten that in. And now it's getting slightly tighter. I'm going to use my 13 millimeter ratchet spanner under there and tighten that a bit further. Now I'm going to tighten that again so it, it touches and it's starting to tighten but I'm not going to over tighten it because at that point my steering's gone quite stiff. So now what I want to do is back off, go back to my standard ring spanner, back off that by maybe only a quarter of a turn but that actually frees up the steering. Yeah. And then to lock it all in position we need to tighten this nut to the bottom of the steering column and not to the chassis. So I've now tightened that and I've now got a steering column that moves quite freely but isn't slack up in the up and down. So there's not lots of free play here. You can see a tiny bit of free play and I might have been able to go a little bit tighter with my bottom bolt on that. Um, but I'd rather there was a little bit more free play than it to be tight. So what we're going to do now is prepare our steering arms, which are actually going to fit underneath the car and attach to that bottom end of the steering to the bolt that we've put in place earlier. We have two of these threaded bars and what we need to do is on each end, we need to place a plain nut 
And it doesn't matter really how far that goes on, but we need, we need to go on a little way to make room for the next part. And then this is a swivel joint um, called a rod end. And what we need to do is actually count the number of turns that we screw this onto the uh, steering arm. And what we want to do is go one, two, and what I'm doing is making a note of where this little bit is here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turns is where we want to stop. And then wind this other plain nut back to that because that acts as a lock nut. Um, just do it finger tight for the moment, but that means that actually that doesn't naturally come undone. Now the reason for nine turns is that it gives us a center position which allows us to adjust that later, either unscrew it a bit or screw it further in. And that will allow us to adjust the alignment of our steering wheels. Now we repeat that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turn, and then should be in the same alignment as the other end. Wind that back. And there we go. We've got a steering arm with a swivel joint on each end. And uh, we can just repeat that with the other one. So what we're going to do next is fit our steering arms that we've just assembled to this bolt that we placed into the steering column uh, before we fitted the steering column. Now, first of all, we need to take off the nut and washer that we placed on there to keep it all in place. And the reason we fitted it earlier is because now with the column fitted to the car, we can't actually get enough space to remove it. Doesn't matter which arm or which direction it goes. I place one there, my colleague Kieran is holding onto that for me to keep it out of the way and one towards my side and then I can put on the washer and the nut and then I'm going to try and do this there we go get the ratchet going the right way and then I can tighten that up Not too tight, but tight enough that it's, it's secure. And what we see now with these rod ends is that our steering arms can actually swivel and move around to allow the steering to turn. But we're just gonna leave those hanging there gently at the moment, being careful not to um, put any pressure on them. And we'll fit those to the outer ends in our next session. You might actually be putting your car away at this point and waiting for the next week's session. So. What we advise at this point, if you're stopping here, is to actually cable tie the ends of the steering arms, the outer ends of the steering arms, um, to the chassis. And you can do that by coming through these two holes with a cable tie, down through the rod end, and then simply tying it up out the way there. That means it's not going to get caught and it's not going to actually yeah, end up bent, which we don't want. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power Project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe. Pretty please? Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.